Hey there, welcome back. Yunus Shafir is here and in this video about cutting for beginners, we are going to learn about arrays. Always with an empty project, let's get started. If you want to create an array, simplest is to create a value of var, name it that array, let's say I want to name numbers and give it a name. You can give it a type, let's say I want to give it a type of int. That means this array will take multiple values of an integer. You can do it like that, array, and put that diamond operator and put int, okay? Now here, you can initialize it in several ways. Well, you can put just array of, and here you can give it its value, one, two, and three. There is a shortcut in int arrays. You can delete that. Well, let me show you this first. You can delete that. If you delete that, it won't complain because it's inferred the type directly from this one, two, and three, okay? If you delete that, now it will say this array of what? You should, you should let it know that this array of int, okay? Now this will not produce a compilation error. Let me delete that again. There is a shortcut for int arrays. You can basically create just int array of. This is much better. It will create an int array object. It will not create an int object. If you go here, you say it will create an int array. Now let's let's create another array for let's say alphabet like that. And here I want to give it an array of string, for example. Well, you have to, you can do that array of string. And here you give it the values array of and let's give it a and b for example. Can you delete that? Yes, you can, because it will infer that this array of string. Now, if you delete that, it will it will say compilation error. Okay, you can delete that, but you have to type it here, of string. All right. Now, let's say we want to create an array of 100 elements, 100 strings. Okay, so we can do. You can just put 100 by hand like that. It will be tedious. So what we can do is create an array initialization. You can put here array and parentheses, and here you give it the size, okay? Now, there is two problems. First one is, what is the type of this array? We put here string. And the second way is how we will initialize this array for each index of that array. In position zero, what we will put, one, what we will put, and so on. So we need to pass here something called lambda. Now, Lambda, we will be talking about Lambda in the future videos also. I will show you the code and its execution so you can understand. Sometimes we understand things by, by their examples. Nice. Now let's print that array. Now in order to print the alphabet, it won't work if you print it like that. It will print the index of that array at in, the, in the memory or the reference in the memory. What you can do is to use arrays from the Java class dot to string and pass it the alphabet. If you run it, you will see a long array with empty things. Okay, empty, 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 and so on. Okay, if you put here A and run it, it will create A 100 times, and you will see that. Okay, so this is the initialization, how it is working. It takes I, I is the index of the array. When the array creation start, it will it will work with this code. For each index, it will apply this code. Let's say for index zero, what is the initialized, ver initialized value of that string? It is A. For index two, it is A. Three, A, 100 A, so it will print A all of the time. If you replace it with I, for example, you will see something interesting. You will see zero, one, two, three, and so on. Why? Because for each index, it will create just the string rep representation of that index, okay? If you put here i plus, or let's say i multiplied by two, run it, and you will see zero, two, four, six, and so on. So this is how we initialize the array. Always remember that this is an index. Basically, sometimes we want empty string, so we put it like that, run it, and so on. Now you can do a simplification, you can delete all that, and something like that. Well, I think can delete it. Yes, exactly. 
because we can reference the index with a special variable called it. Let me show you it is working correctly. Now, if you, you want to work with that index, you just have to use it because it reference that index. Okay, and as you go with it, it is 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay, now when the lambda, it is at the end of the arguments, you can just put it out of this bracket. Well, you can do it here, but also you can put it here. Okay, just remember that. And this is how you can create a string. Now, let's say I want to create int. It's just the same thing. We need to just delete this one, this one, and go. It will create 0, 1, 2, until 100. Let me delete that. And as you can see, int gets grayed out. Why? Because it concludes the type directly from this one. Okay? If you delete that, it will work correctly. Okay? Now, if you put this into a string, it will know it is a string. And if you run this, we won't get 0, 1, 2, 3. We, won't, we will get it, 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 it. I didn't print it, sorry, because we are not using the dollar sign. It will print it, 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 it. Okay? So this is how you can create arrays. Basically, you can do the same thing with any object you want. Okay? Just remember that this is the size, and this is how you will initialize that array. There is other built-in type, I think. There is byte array of, yes, short array of, yeah, exactly. There is double array of, yes, and float, I think. Yes, exactly. So we have all the primitive types with their primitive arrays creation process. Now you can do something else. We can do something else with the loops. We studied about loops. You can iterate over any array like that. We have something special. You can use numbers dot directly for each. And for each number in that array, we we'll print it. Now, in order to print it, remember this is a lambda and you can reference the variable using it. Now, it here references this value, one, two, and three. If you run it, it will print one, two, and three because we are using print directly. One, two, and three. You can name that, that variable into lambda using something like that, value, and you put this thing. Okay, now you have to work with the value. And all the previous example of the loops apply also. You can work with indices and also with a while loop, for loop, and with index. Now, there is something else. If you want to find the value of a specific value in the string, in the array, sorry, you can use well, that number and you can use the get method with the index of one, for example. Index of one will get you the value of two. Run it it will print here too. You can use get, or you can use this brackets and put one here. If you run it, it will get you that number. Same thing, if you want to set a value in this array, if you want to set a value in this array, you can put one equal to seven and print that location. It will print what? It will print seven because we replace this two by the number of seven. So this is how you set it. You can set it this way, or you can always use set, in which you provide the index and the new value. Let's put eight here, and it will print an eight instead of seven. Okay, I just changed the example. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about arrays. If you didn't watch the video about for loops, make sure you watch it because it includes some video or some example about how to iterate over the array using indices or with index function. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, make sure to post, post below, subscribe to the channel, and see you next video.